Hi everyone, this is Chris. Welcome to your first tutorial. Today we're going to be teaching how to measure elevation, starting at Bartlett Hall and going down to Passion Puddle. To do this, we'll be showing you how to use a site level, how to focus in on measurements, and then take those measurements and put them into leveling notes. There's some pretty basic math. Don't worry, we'll be taking it slow. And in the end, you'll be able to see elevation changes over distance. Zooming back in to Bartlett Hall, we'll go over some basic terminology. The first two terms being for the tools themselves. A site level and tripod marked by the letter T and a measuring rod or Philadelphia rod marked by the letter R. Now this first measurement is actually going to be going backwards from our intended destination of Passion Puddle. The beginning of a series of measurements must begin at a known elevation or for the purposes of our exercise, an assumed elevation at a fixed point. It's from this known elevation that the rest of our measurements will be based off of. The term for this known elevation at a fixed point is benchmark. For the purposes of this exercise, we'll be assuming that there's a benchmark at the top of the curb at 100 feet of elevation. Looking back to this known elevation, the first measurement we're going to take is called a backsite. Backsite measurements will be happening repeatedly throughout this measuring process. The second measurement we're going to take happens after the rod holder moves downhill. This is also something that's going to be happening repeatedly until we reach that destination. The elevations that we'll be recording will be based on all of these rod locations. Once in place, the next measurement looks forward to an unknown elevation. This is called a foresight. Backsights and foresights are the two types of measurements we'll be repeating throughout this process. After this measurement, it's now the tripod holder's turn to take a walk downhill. In doing so, the tripod and sight level essentially pivot or turn around the rod. This brings us to our next term, the turning point. The turning point is a surveying position chosen by the rod holder just prior to the tripod and sight level moving around it. It's important to note that this location is chosen at the discretion of the rod holder based on the terrain. This is done so that any significant changes in the slope are recorded in the leveling notes. After the tripod has moved, it will then look backwards, once again, to the rod. This is yet another backsight. Once recorded, the rod holder will move downhill again and create another turning point, which would then be entered in the leveling notes. Every time the rod holder moves, a new line is started with a new turning point in those leveling notes. As you can see, abbreviations are used in place of the terminology we were just discussing. Under the points column, BM stands for benchmark, TP for turning point, where BS for backsight, HI for height of instrument, FS for foresight, and the last one, elevation. The mathematical process we go through to get our height of instrument and elevation via the backsight and foresights is called differential leveling. We'll be getting into that a little bit later. This whole pattern of measuring backsights and foresights with the rod holder moving around the tripod and then the tripod moving around the rod is something that is going to ultimately give us our finished elevation measurements. When setting up the tripod in sight level, 
you'll want to set it up as level as possible by eye. Then moving around, you'll anchor it firmly into the ground. Next up, you'll want to fine tune the leveling via the leveling screws on the unit itself. The two screws left and right will always be moving simultaneously inward or outward. These left and right screws will adjust the leveling from left to right, whereas the front screw will adjust it by tilting it forward and backward. When you reach center bubble, the unit is level. Another important thing to note is that we've set the course to zero degrees. For our purposes, we'll be measuring in a straight line down to Passion Puddle. This will allow us to turn the unit 180 degrees so that our back sights and fore sights line up. This will be particularly important when establishing the horizontal distance between where the rod is placed. We'll be getting into horizontal distance in another lesson. Once your instruments are set up, you're ready to take your first back sight measurement. As discussed earlier, we'll be using the benchmark at the top of the curb of 100 feet. Once this starting elevation is entered and the unit is leveled, you're ready to sight the Philadelphia rod and focus in. Inside the viewfinder, you'll find the crosshairs. It's important that you get those crosshairs essentially to line up with either the top or the bottom of one of these black bars. These rods are divided into tenths and one hundredths of a foot, with the red numbers indicating entire feet, the black numbers indicating tenths of a foot, and the black bars in between indicating one hundredths of a foot. Now, another way of looking at this, if we look at the 8 tenths mark, is that 8 tenths is equal to 80 one hundredths of a foot. If we go up to the bottom bar, we'll see that we go to 80 one hundredths of a foot. The top of the black bar, 80 two hundredths of a foot, and so on and so forth, with the bottom of the black bars being odd, the top even, until we get to 90 one hundredths of a foot or reduced to nine-tenths of a foot. Now, for a quick reference, in between the eight and nine-tenths mark, you'll see a pointed black bar, which rests exactly in the middle. This can be quickly referenced as the 85 one-hundredths of a foot mark. This halfway point is easily identified between all numbers on the measuring rod. This will help speed up the sighting of your measurements. Now, this would be a good time to pause the video and give this reading a shot. Resting two spaces above the halfway point of 85 hundredths of a foot, we reach 87 hundredths of a foot as the final reading. Now, before entering that backsight measurement, into the leveling notes, it's important to check with the rod holder that you actually called it right. To do this, Rich is going to simply point to the number to make sure I'm in the right area. With the number confirmed correctly, we can now enter that backside measurement in the column titled BS. Now it's here that we have the first of two basic equations that allows the differential leveling to work. This equation is simply elevation plus back sight equals the height of your instrument, or HI. For this first line of measurements, there is no foresight. We'll be getting into that shortly. But in order to do so, the rod holder has to take a walk. When the rod holder moves downhill, that's your sign that you'll need to start a new turning point in your leveling notes. Once that's done, we're ready to take our first foresight measurement. As the rod holder sets up 
It's important to check your level, make sure nothing has changed since you spun the unit around 180 degrees. Afterwards, you'll be citing your next measurement. In this case, you'll notice the small red number 7 on the rod. This is a reminder to the viewer that they are in the 7 foot mark of measurements. Take a moment to pause the video now and see if you can determine the proper measurement. This time, the crosshair is exactly in the middle between the 7 and 8 tenths of an inch markers. In the 7 foot category of the rod, this would be written down as 7.75 feet, or 7 foot and 75 hundredths of a foot. With the foresight now recorded, this gives us the opportunity to utilize our second equation, which will help get us the elevation. To do this, all you need to do is take the height of instrument from the previous line and subtract your recently recorded foresight. Back sights are always added to the elevation to get your height of instrument. The height of instrument, in turn, is then subtracted by the foresight to give the elevation on the next turning point line. The entry being complete, it's now the tripod holder's turn to take a walk. With the rod now having spun 180 degrees, it's important that the sight level is in line with that rod. Resetting up your tripod, securing it, you'll then go through the same steps of leveling the unit. Once it's level and in place, it's time to focus and do another reading. Take a moment now to pause the video and try to establish this back sight measurement. Taking note of the red three, we know that we are over three feet high off the ground. Taking note then of the three tenths mark and that we are two marks above that, we know that we are at the 3.32 foot mark. Calling out the measurement, Rich then double checks to make sure I'm calling it correctly. And establishing that, we are ready to enter our second back sight Having done this, it's now time to establish the height of instrument. To do this, remember, back sights are always added to the elevation of the same line, giving us the height of instrument. Having completed this line, it is time yet again for the rod holder to take a walk. By now, you might be getting bored with the repetition. Nevertheless, let's do one more sight measurement, this time with the rod a little further away. Go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. The measurement being complete, it's time to enter the foresight and establish our elevation. Remember, the elevation is always established by subtracting the foresight from the height of instrument from the previous line. Fast forwarding through the remaining back sights and foresights till we hit our destination of Fashion Puddle, let's take a look at the leveling notes for what those back sights and foresights were up till now. Knowing the two equations to establish the elevation as well as the height of instrument. This is a good time to pause the video and see if you can fill in the blanks. For the final line, you'll see that the point, back sight, and height of instrument columns remain blank. This is because we ended by shooting a foresight, which gives us the final elevation. As for the point column, because we have a final elevation, 
but it is not a fixed known elevation like our benchmark, we will simply call this pond or pond 1. Throughout this process, you may have noticed that there's a little bit of a rhythm that goes into taking the notes. With the page divided left and right, first the foresight and elevation is recorded on the right, then the backsight and height of instrument on the left. Every time the tripod moves, it gives us a back sight and, with the equation, a height of instrument. Every time the rod moves, it gives us a foresight and an elevation. In this way, the notes go back and forth from the right side of the page to the left side of the page, back and forth until we reach the final elevation. This completes our leveling notes, but before wrapping up, we need to do a math check to make sure we made no mistakes. Before submitting our leveling notes, we'll need to check to make sure that our math is correct throughout the differential leveling process. In order to do this, we'll be adding all of our backsites and foresights, and then subtracting the foresights from the backsights. After this, we'll take our finished elevation and subtract the starting elevation. If the numbers match up, we're good to go. This check ensures that our math is correct throughout the differential leveling process. In this case, we see that we lost a total of 31.37 feet from the top of the curb to Passion Puddle. That wraps up our first tutorial we certainly encourage you to use this as a resource and go back to it as many times as you need to. There'll be more tutorials in the future, so till then.